So chapter eight picks up um, from our study of cellular processes and goes into a specific process, which is cell division. So chapter eight, um, we're gonna do in two parts. Um, it's only one chapter, but it's big enough that I think it's worth doing in two parts. So part A is on mitosis, where part B is gonna be on another process of cell division, which is meiosis. Um, so this is the one we're gonna do first, um, and that process of mitosis. So all of cell division is really linked to reproduction. And reproduction was one of those signs of um, a living organism. And living organisms can make more of themselves. And so on an organism level, we've got this idea of reproduction. But on a cellular level, that's really where reproduction starts, and that's cell division. And so we've got this idea of a hierarchy here, again, and one of those signs of life. So we should kick it off with why cells divide at all. And there are some key things for us to remember back to things we've already learned. And then also that we're going to use as we go forward. So the first reason is for efficiency. And so we talked about how cells are small because of the surface area to volume ratio. And so what this is saying is if it gets too big, the plasma membrane can't service the volume of the cell. And so we get a, a ratio or a, a relationship between those two components of a cell. And if it gets too big, it's inefficient. So this is one of our first form and function ideas as one of those themes of biology. The next idea is that if we're a multicellular organism, we need to divide and make more cells. And so that's key, um, and we're acutely aware of that, as we are a multicellular organism. The last one, again, um, some of us are more acutely aware of this. If you have any kind of an injury right now, you have a lot of mitosis going on. Um, and so um, growth and repair are really important jobs that mitosis or cell division has in our bodies. And so these are key when we talk about why cells divide, these, these components of, of staying alive, basically. So cell division has a parent cell that divides into two daughter cells. We're going to talk about daughter cells and sister chromatids. I'm not certain why they go with the, the female lineage in a family for some of the vocabulary, but they certainly do in cell division. So before division, the chromosomes from the parent cell are copied or duplicated. Now, this is important. If I have a cut on my finger that I want fixed with cells that are the same as my finger, I need to duplicate the chromosomes to then divide evenly into the new cells. And so at some point we have to double the chromosomes and then in the cell division process, we have to divide them into the two new cells. And so that's an important um, component that's easily uh, neglected as you go through this process. Um, yeah. If we were to just talk about prokaryotic cells in this course, we'd be done really, really quickly because the first thing that's going to happen in a prokaryotic cell is that we're going to uh, multiply or duplicate, I should use that word. I'm going to actually make it easier. Chromosomes times two. And so that's a key part. The second thing is that the cell is going to get bigger. The third thing that we're going to do is it's going to split. So this is about prokaryotes. You'll remember that they don't have all the organelles. Bacteria, archaea would be examples of prokaryotes. And this process is called binary fission. So it's not mitosis, it's not meiosis, it's binary fission. Binary for two and fission for split. So it does happen in all prokaryotic cells and we get identical cells. The key here is this duplication thing. So this duplication that I put in the box on the last slide is a key part of even cell division in prokaryotic cells. If this um, classifies as asexual reproduction for bacterial cells. So if you have like a, a strep throat or something, um, this is how you're getting more bacterial cells um, that will infect you. Um, and so it's very different than in eukaryotic cells. So we're going to talk mostly about eukaryotic cells through chapter eight um, and, and all animal and plant cells. 
and protists are eukaryotic cells. So we spend a lot of time talking about eukaryotic cells, so we're going to spend a fair amount of time talking about cell division in eukaryotic cells. So the kind of eukaryotic cells division um, really depends on the purpose of the two, two of the new cells. And so we have two processes, one called mitosis. And you can't see me right now, but I'm pointing to my toes. It happens in mitosis. Um, and then meiosis, which is a rather more specialized um, process of cell division. And it has a singular function, which is to make the gametes for sexual reproduction. So mitosis has uh, uh, more reasons for it to happen in our bodies. And, and we probably have more mitosis happening in our bodies. So if we were a single-celled organism, then we would reproduce through mitosis. You can also have a multicellular organism that is capable of this. So this is more rare, but a sea star is a good example of this. So if I were to take a piece of the sea star off, it could regrow another uh, sea star. Pretty amazing bioadaption. Um, and if we could sort of uh, hijack that into other organisms would be pretty amazing. Um, you know, you could regrow an organ or, or, or whatever your body was deficient in. Um, so pretty amazing and, and not human, so we might not have thought about it. The other one that mitosis is, this is more in humans, this is maybe a little bit closer to our experience, growth and repair. And so um, growth of a multicellular organism, so at one point we were one single um, fertilized egg, and there's a lot of mitosis to bring that us into an adult form. The other one is repair and replacement. So this is more of a maintenance thing. Um, it, maybe it's healing. If you have a bit of a cut or whatever, there's lots of mitosis. Different parts of our bodies also have more mitosis in them than others. So any part of your body that's rapidly growing um, or any part of a plant that is rapidly growing, um, oftentimes the, the apexes, the root and the, the stem apex grow really, really quickly. And there's a lot of mitosis happening there. So meiosis, on the other hand, is um, the process for making sperm and egg or pollen and egg in plants for sexual reproduction. In this, we make offspring that are similar to the parents, but not identical. And this is a key word. They show variation. This variation is everything when it comes to evolution. We had some introduction to this back when we talked about some general themes, and this variation is really important. And it's an innate part of any organism that reproduces sexually because of the process of meiosis. So in organisms that reproduce sexually, they inherit unique sets of genes from two parents, um, half from the sperm and half from the egg. So in humans, that's 23 and 23, making a 46 chromosome uh, human. So different organisms have a different number of chromosomes, um, but sometimes this is easier if we relate it to something that we already know or have heard about, maybe 23andMe, the, the genetic profiling um, or profile uh, business. And just as a reminder, uh, there's many plants also that undergo sexual reproduction. So cute little image of the flower and the bee, I guess, um, just as a reminder of that. So overall, we could talk about the process of cell division, but the life cycle of the cell or the cell cycle, so it's the life cycle, includes interphase, mitosis, and cytokinesis. So I often link them all together um, in my discussion of this because they are part of the cell cycle. So the cell cycle is an ordered sequence of events. We often think of it as, um, you know, a step set of sequences, but it's more like a ramp. It's more of like a continuum, if you will. And so, you know, textbooks talk about like how many stages it is. And, and these are kind of made up. They're, they're made up so that we can kind of quantify or, or put these processes into neat, neat tiny boxes. And um, most of us know that Life doesn't go neatly into tidy little boxes. And so, um, yeah, I, I don't think that this works all that well for that either. Um, you'll find different uh, publications group things differently. So kicking it off here, interphase, the key thing that happens in interphase, 
I keep putting a red box around it, is the duplication of chromosomes. So that happened in binary fission, and it also happens in mitosis and in meiosis. And so it happens outside of the mitotic phase, but in this process called interphase. So we have the growth phase, the synthesis phase, and the second growth phase. So these are all the kind of normal life processes. So this is all of chapter five and all of chapter six and four. All the stuff that we've learned about cells so far is going on. Mitosis is the different phases that we'll study in detail. Um, and then cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm. That's where we really get new cells made. I love this image. Um, this is the thing that I keep putting that red box around. So this is key because it duplicates the chromosomes in both mitosis and meiosis um, so that they can be divided out into the new cells. And you can see here that most of the time of a cell is spent in interphase. And you'd be wrong to say that nothing is happening in interphase because there's a ton happening in interphase. Basically everything other than cell division, all the growth, all the staying alive is happening in an interphase. In addition, this key process that if we didn't have it, um, cell duplication wouldn't work um, because we wouldn't have enough chromosomes in our offspring cells. So cytokinesis and mitosis all kind of lumped in there in that mitotic phase. There are some key ideas and vocabulary to get started here. And so um, it's, it's good just to kind of make some sense of the word. So then when we talk about the different phases of mitosis, then you're not backtracking on all the vocabulary that I'm using. So some ideas and vocabulary, we could talk about chromosomes um, and we know that they're duplicated with each cell cycle or each cell division. And the skill testing question for you now is what part of the cell cycle does that happen in? I'm imagining Jeopardy music. I'm putting a red box here if you want to look back. In that box, I would say the S phase of interphase. So sometimes not seen as a division um, stage. I remember the, the cycles and you might have, or the phases, you might have um, done the pre-reading on these. I remember I, P, P, M, A, T, and we could also do um, a C down here. So I can ask you to right now to remember or think of a cute little fuzzy puppy, okay? Because that's gonna make this memory device a little bit nicer to hear. So the order of the cell cycle for me is I, pee pee, mat. So that cute little puppy you're, you're teaching to be house broke um, and go outside when they need to go pee. Um, and you might train them to pee on a piece of newspaper or something. I don't know. Um, really just trying to leverage the, your, your imagining the cute little puppy right now. Um, but these are the stages of mitosis or the stages of the cell cycle um, that I, I use that as my memory device. So some other general terminology, chromatin we've seen in chapter four. Chromatin was a very general term. And it was for all the DNA and proteins that are in the nucleus. We could talk about chromatin as sort of um, uncoiled or the chromatin in interphase because to prepare for division, the chromatin is going to coil, highly compact or coil, and then it's visible. And so, you know, it's kind of like getting a drawstring of a hoodie caught in the dryer or something. It kind of coils up on itself and in that way, under a microscope, you can actually see it. So the chromatin here, I always say, is like a, a diffuse plate of spaghetti. And the chromatin is like spaghetti on a fork. I'm trying to draw spaghetti all wrapped up on a fork. And it would be more um, compact um, and ready to go in your mouth, basically. So this is the difference between two stages of mitosis. This would be the difference between interphase And then the first phase of mitosis or prophase. Okay, so we've got chromosomes, chromatin, um, the idea of them coiling, that also starts with a C. You'll notice that there's a lot of words that start with the letter C. Each chromosome, each double chromosome, because they're going to double up here. So each double chrome appears as two sister chromatids in prophase and beyond. So 
the two sister chromatids are identical because they were duplicated, right? The sister chromatids are joined at the centromere, a middle, at the middle. So unbelievable how many words start with C. So a double chromosome would have one chromatid and another chromatid, and they are joined at the middle in a region called the centromere. And so this would be a centromere, and these would be two sister chromatids, making a chromosome or sometimes called a double chromosome. All right, let's keep going. So this would be that picture. Um, this would be the sister chromatids of a double chromosome. Oh, I'll put that. This is a double chromosome. The whole thing made up of two sister chromatids. All right. This picture I have a bit of a problem with because, you know, the single chromosomes don't coil like this. So we would have chromatin, the diffuse plate of spaghetti, in interphase. And then they would coil and look like these double chromosomes after that in prophase. I'm trying to drop some, some hints or organizing advice here, um, but we will go through each of the phases um, throughout this lesson. We're almost done, and we're almost done with words that start with the letter C. So the mitotic spindle, the spindle fiber, this is made up of tubules. You might remember from chapter four, I said, hey, let's not worry too much about the cytoskeleton. For some of these, it's easier to see them in action or have context for them. So microtubules or spindle fibers or mitotic spindles are like the winch cables that I might have discussed that are going to come out of the centrosomes to pull those double chromosomes apart so they can divide those chromosomes into the two daughter cells. So the centrosomes, I might have um, mentioned, uh, they look like churros in the, <laughs> the diagrams. And this is um, the, the site where the spindle fibers are produced. Now this gets a little bit confusing down here because you may have answered that there's a difference between animal and plant cells in that animal cells seem to have another structure called centrioles. And we're not really sure what they're doing in there. Um, this is something that's still under study, um, but we do know that plant cells don't appear to have them, and yet both animal and plant cells, being eukaryotic cells, can go through the process of mitosis without any troubles. So science is still evolving. We need to summarize some of these words so far. So some of the words that you might want to think of, they would be chromatin, I had somebody say this is spaghetti, <laughs> So it's diffuse, it's uncoiled, if you will. And I would see that in interphase. Once the chromatin coils, it's, it's doubled in interphase, and then we could see it as a double chromosome, or sometimes just called a chromosome. So a double chromosome has two parts to it, it has two sister chromatids that are identical. Those should have been more identical. So this double chromosome has two sister chromatids. And they are joined in the middle at the centromere. All right. A lot of C words so far. Let's keep going because we had a couple more and we had the concept of the spindle fiber. So that was the centrosome that sends out the winch cable, that sends out the microtubule, that sends out the spindle fibers. You actually end up with two of them in the cell, one at each end of the nucleus, so that's kind of like the anchor point to draw these chromosomes back. And then in animal cells, there are also two centrioles per centrosome. 
Oh my goodness, way too many words that start with the letter C. Okay, so hopefully that keeps things a little straight for you. We're gonna move on and talk about all of the phases. So this is um, what I've talked about before, where the idea is that um, it's not discrete steps. It's not a whole bunch of um, independent things. It's, it's uh, more of a, a ramp, if you will, than sort of these stages. I often talk about it, it's like really hard to tell when, you know, a kid becomes a preteen or an adolescent or a young adult, right? Like we come up with these categories or boxes for people and it's really hard to tell. So this is the I, P, P, M, A, T, with a C on the end, um, that is the outline of the stages of the cell cycle and sometimes the, the, the phases of mitosis that we talk about.